Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this Christmas special video, we're looking at an easy way you can get started with Arduino to add some animation and action to your layout. As you might have seen in some of my videos, I'm a big fan of using Arduinos and similar bits of kit to add automation in. You might have wanted to try that with your layout, but maybe you thought that learning the code was too difficult or that the wiring looked too complicated. Well, this kit might be what you need to get started. A company called Seed got in touch telling me that they'd come up with the easiest way to get involved with Arduino and asked if I'd like to take a look at a system they've developed called Grove. So they've sent me the Grove Beginner Kit and the Grove Education add-on pack to take a look at. The Grove Beginner Kit is an all-in-one kit, no breadboard, no soldering, no wiring needed. They've cut all that out so you can focus on coding and Arduino learning. Just open the box and play. Included in the kit, you get the Cduino Lotus, which is an Arduino compatible board, along with 10 modules that connect up to it. The input modules include sensors for light, sound, air pressure, temperature, and motion. There's a push button and a rotary potentiometer in there. And the output modules include a buzzer, a light, and an OLED display. And this really is an open and play system. You don't even need to take it out of the box. The modules are already connected to the Cduino on the board. So if you pull the USB cable out the end of the box and plug it in, there's already a program installed on there which shows you what's possible. The inputs are all linked to the display and if you hold the push button down, you can use the potentiometer to change the settings. How cool is that? This is such a neat package and Seed have been really thoughtful with the details. Full disclosure, I've been sent the kit for free, but I'm not getting paid to say anything positive. I'm genuinely impressed. The education add-on pack is an extension for this, which is full of more modules, including a water atomizer, a mini fan, a servo, an ultrasonic distance sensor, an infrared sensor, and a motion sensor, along with some more cables, an infrared remote, and some brackets for mounting the modules. Seed even provides tutorials and projects to help you learn, and I could have just shown you one of those, but this is a model railway channel, so I thought it would be more fun to build a Christmas theme layout and see how much of this stuff I could use to add in some fun animations. So here's my plan for Santa's North Pole layout. So here's what I'm thinking. It's gonna be small, less than a foot wide, and maybe two to three foot long. It'll be divided down the middle, on one side we'll have it decorated, on the other side there'll be some hidden storage. And then we'll have a tunnel portal in the middle with a short stretch of track coming in. We'll have Santa's Grotto over here, and I really want to use the OLED screen, so this can be showing some sort of details about the train arrival. Then we'll have some sort of toy machine here that's gonna make the toys and we'll put the water atomizer in here and we can pretend it's steam operated maybe put the motor in here turning some cogs the santa express is then going to back in and we'll use the ultrasonic rangefinder because i really want to use that that looks really cool to detect when the train is in the right position that'll activate a buzzer and the light on the toy machine and the servo will then tip some presents from the toy machine into the wagon it's a pretty ambitious plan i'm very short on time so let's get building this layout So here we go, a time lapse of the build. And I didn't leave myself very long to do this. Lots of polystyrene going in. I used a Hornby tunnel portal that I had lying around. Everyone needs a foam cutter. They're fantastic at shaping polystyrene. Then I bought this fake snow material that's meant to go under Christmas trees off Amazon. That worked really well as a base over top of the polystyrene. Fitted a few trees. These are the cheap trees that you get off eBay. Then I've got a little Santa's Grotto. This is a downloadable kit. It's free and my mum built it when she was down visiting. Drilling a few holes for the wires here, just positioning everything. The ultrasonic rangefinder's in there. The displays come through. Now I'm just working on the toy machine or the toy factory. Um, I've attached the motor there with a little gear on it. And um, the water atomizer's attached to the back and the servo's glued to the front. Plenty of hot glue being used here. And then I've covered it in cardboard. Um, I used a little bottle cap to hold the water for the atomizer, positioning everything there, and then I didn't think it looked very neat and tidy just with the cardboard, so I gave it a wrap in some brick paper um, and put something around the chimney as well, um, and a little wooden fake plank thing to go over the tipper. And then I did a little frame for the display, which wasn't standing up straight. So put the trees back in, a bit of fake snow, and there we go. Fairly happy with what I've ended up with, given it only took a few hours. Could have spent a lot longer on this. Didn't have the time. But the important thing is, does it work?
On to the coding, and I'm going to whiz through this and not go into too much detail. If you want to know more, then Seed have put together a wiki for all their products, and in here you can find documentation, project ideas, demonstrations, and importantly, example code. Most of the modules are straightforward to code for, but for the more complicated modules such as the display and the ultrasonic range finder, I went onto the wiki, copied the example code, dumped it into my sketch and adapted it. If you get stuck, they also have a forum where you can ask questions and get support. Back to the code and we start with including five libraries up here to support the various modules we're using. Here we're setting up the ultrasonic range finder, the servo and the display. We need to create some timers here that we'll use later on in the code. Here we're creating some variables to hold the pin numbers for each module. I'm also creating a variable to hold the distance measured by the rangefinder and a variable that I can use as a trigger. We've got a tipper routine here and this gets activated if a train is detected in the right place. It controls the buzzer, the light and activates the servo after 5 seconds have passed. Here's the setup routine which connects the display, sets the display font, connects the servo to a pin and sets the motor, atomizer, light and buzzer as outputs. Then we're into the main loop which runs continuously. It gets the current time from the clock, clears the display memory, measures the distance from the rangefinder. Then it checks if the train is less than a certain distance from the rangefinder. If it is, then the toy machine stops running and prepares to tip. The display is updated and the tipper routine that we've already looked at is called. If the train's too far away, then the factory continues to run and the light and buzzer are turned off and the display is updated to show the distance to the train as it backs in. Down here, the servo and the timer are reset and we send a command to update the display. Then we've got a short delay to give the system a chance to breathe. Now let's see if it all works. Okay, so I'm manually reversing the train in towards that sensor get within two centimeters, toy tipping in progress on the display, and here we go, the buzzer's beeping away, the presents go in, and away I go. The factory starts up again and the smoke's on. Let's see that from a different angle, backing up again, the display's counting down the distance. I've stopped a bit too early, there we go, the buzzer's on, the cogs stopped on the factory, the toys, in they go, and I pull away. The factory starts up again, the cog spinning and the smoke's back on. So there we go, if you want to start messing around with Arduinos and learning to code, then these Grove kits from Seed are a great way to go about it. You can buy these directly from the Seed website, but the prices are in US dollars and they ship from China, so they can take a while to get here. You can also get them from Amazon, eBay and a few other places though. The cheapest I could find the beginner kit was for around £25 and the education add-on pack was around £40. Seed don't just make beginner kits, they do loads of cool electronic stuff, including Internet of Things tech, Raspberry Pi stuff, and robotics projects. There's something for everyone to play around with. There's also a lot of tutorials on their website, so it's worth checking out no matter what your level of experience. I've already got some RFID tagging stuff from them that I'm hoping to play around with and use for train tracking. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Massive thanks to my channel members and patrons for your support this year. I really do appreciate it and keep your eyes out for the members only December update that will be coming out in the next few days. All that's left to say is thanks for watching. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas and I will see you again in the new year.